This is our trip to the Japanese Alps to see the snow monkeys and the uh, huge 40 foot snow corridor. Uh, it takes about five to six hours depending how you get there. We drove to the far side near Toyama. We left at 3 a.m., drove through the night, and uh, yes, a lot of monkeys on the way. But it was a long drive. You could go uh, to the closer three hours from Tokyo, Nagano side, but we went like six hours from Tokyo to the Toyama side to get to Tateyama Station. Yeah, I love e leaving really early for these long trips. Everyone sleeps well or happy. No one's crying. When are we there yet? Uh, anyway, we got to Tateyama Cable Station pretty early in the morning, 8.30. I think they start selling tickets at 7 and then again at 8. Um, and we were a little worried because it's peak season that they could sell out. But we were fine. We only had to wait like an hour for the cable car to come. Uh, I think they come every 10 minutes, but the next available one was an hour. There's free car parking, uh, food to eat there. The cable car takes about 10 minutes, and then you're on like a 50-minute bus ride after that. Um, so yeah, we got off at Bijo Daira Station from the cable car, picked up the bus, and that took us to the snow corridor itself. Um, so this was a Friday morning right at peak season because it opens. Oh yeah, our son was not happy at this point. Um, but yeah, that happens. There's a snow corridor again. Uh, you can see it's starting to get... Uh, higher and higher and higher the maximum height was at 13 meters or 40 feet uh, they dropped you off at Murodo station which is a quick walk to that highest spot of the snow corridor you also get to see the mountains uh, right at the station and take some hikes and stuff so this is um okay april 21st so uh still early in the season because they only open this uh the roads uh mid-april um so I think this is like the peak you'll ever see. And But the snow stays till June, they say. Uh, the station has some restaurants, stores, lockers. So we put a lot of our stuff away, 400 yen, and just could walk around unencumbered. Uh, yeah, this is the peak of the walls. Uh, 40 feet high, pretty crazy. And like I said, the snow lasts all the way till June. Yeah, when we got there, we thought it was gonna be cold, but we got hot and we were getting snow blind. So we had to go buy sunglasses because it was just like impossible to walk around. I didn't wear them, but all the kids wanted them and my wife really wanted them. It was nice. The snow corridor was cool, but I think it was just as cool as just walking around. Um, you could walk to the onsen bathhouse to get a uh, bath for a thousand yen. We didn't end up doing it just because uh, we had some cranky kids. We had to get back home. Um, but yeah, there was people skiing, people with backpacks. You know, I don't know. They were doing multi-day hiking adventures or something. But it was a wild place. Pretty cool just to see the epic mountains with the snow. It just seemed like, yeah, just so magical. And they have um, what they call like an, um, like this sulfur cloud. So you smell sulfur a lot. And then you see these plumes of sulfur bursting into the sky. It's just a really cool, unique kind of experience. And that onsen is actually the highest in all of Japan. The highest altitude onsen. So uh, if that's what you're into, definitely. Yeah, if, if I knew it was there, I would have prepped for it. And we probably would have done it. And then you could take a short half mile wa uh, walk to Jiko Kudani Valley. And this is where all the onsen, uh, sorry, all the sulfur plumes are coming from. Uh, yeah, so it was kind of cool. The smell is pungent. They do say don't go if you're pregnant because it could be bad for you. Uh, we saw a rock ptarmigan, which is kind of like the iconic bird of the area. Um, I also call it a thunderbird. And then we took uh, the bus back home. We had to wait probably like 30 minutes to an, uh, 40 minutes to get, take a bus. Uh, a lot of people queued up. I think the last bus is 4.30 to get down. Yeah, everyone was exhausted <laughs> once we uh, once we uh, got on the bus, everyone fell asleep. Bicycles. And then we took the cable car back down and then drove to our Airbnb from there. Um, okay, we're staying at this Airbnb, realizing that maybe Airbnbs are not uh, the luxury Airbnb <laughs> um, experience we're used to in America. Anyway, it seems fine enough, I guess, but just... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Usually Airbnbs in America are like a luxury. Um, and I would not say this is luxury, but you know, it was fairly inexpensive and they'll house all of us. So that's kind of cool. Um, and it has a great view, which I'm excited about. But uh, yeah, we're here for two days, no shower. So we got to go to the onsen. And uh, yep. Yeah, so for dinner, we went to Conveyor Belt Sushi, which is our family's like favorite restaurant to go to. We're always going to Kaiten Sushi. Uh, yeah, so we did this over an extended weekend. Uh, took Friday off and just spent Saturday and Sunday exploring. Uh, kids playing some sumo wrestling. Uh, I know they recently got into wrestling a lot. They're always wrestling with each other like little puppies. 
Uh, we've checked out the Omicho Fish Market in Kanazawa. So Kanazawa is also close to this area and kind of a famous city to explore. You know, they have like geisha districts and fish markets. Uh, fish market was fun. We got to try a lot of food stalls and sample a bunch of things. Had this really good curry pond actually. But uh, yeah, just cool to kind of see all the different fish on display. It's always just fun to visit these markets, I feel like. There's Takenoko bamboo shoots. It's a bamboo shoot harvesting season. We actually picked some from my backyard and ate it. Oh, here's a tiny fried shrimp that we tried. And then we went to Kanazawa Castle, which is all very walkable too. Um, and uh yeah had a good time there nice sprawling lawns you don't see a lot of grass in japan so it's kind of enjoyable oh our son decided to uh, go on strike for walking uh he's only a couple months uh, or what is he 18 months now i guess he's a year and a half but yeah uh, <laughs> he does this thing where he puts his head on the ground and refuses to budge uh, i guess he this is his strike continuing where he's laying on the ground <laughs> my older uh, six-year-old decides to step in and help him out but uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of amusing watching him and his shenanigans. Oh, there he goes running away again. I don't know. I guess he wasn't happy at this moment. Uh, but yeah, we had a good time exploring the castle. Very pretty. Uh, has a moat all the way around it. This moat was clear. A lot of the moats we see, like around Tokyo Castle and stuff, are not super clear. They had beautiful flowers blossoming. It was a cool park to check out and walk around it. I thought it was uh, really well done. Next to the uh, castle is Ken Lokuen Garden, which isn't free. The castle is free. Uh, it's pretty cheap though. 320 yen for an adult. Uh, really pretty castle. You know, they have a little bit of food there too and a little bit of shops. Um, but yeah, lots of water, lots of ponds, lots of creeks, awesome trees uh, that have been like supported and really uh, maintained. Um, so a pretty place to go and walk through. I would recommend it. I thought it was cool. Uh, here my kids are looking at the carp. Uh, a lot of bridges, uh, even a waterfall there. A pretty place for sure. A lot of people are dressed up in kimonos taking pictures. Next, we walk to this Higashi Chaya district, where it's an old fashioned district. There's like a samurai village, old buildings, tea houses. And uh, yeah, I wasn't super impressed with it. I guess it was kind of cool. Maybe we went a little too late. Um, yeah, afterwards, we just got dinner and then, you know, we were tired. So we just slept. We woke up early again. That was Sunday. So we had to drive home all the way. Uh, we went through Nagano and we visited the Snow Monkey Park. Uh, which was actually really cool. It was better than I thought. There was monkeys everywhere. Before you start the hike, because it is like a one and a half mile hike in, I have a live video cam to show you are the monkeys actually there or not, because they're not like caged or anything. They come and go as they please. They're wild monkeys. Um, oh, there, there my kids uh, found a little hot spring. It was like warm. It wasn't hot. And they were just feeling it. Um, yeah, so sulfur here too. You can smell it. And uh, oh, they still found some tadpoles. But uh, yeah, it's a nice, nice little walk. Not too strenuous, I would say. Um, yeah, monkeys everywhere. Even before you get in the park and pay anything, you can just see monkeys. Uh, and then here's this uh, geyser, which is apparently always erupting, which was kind of cool and unique too. Uh, shooting out like super hot liquid. And uh, yeah, the monkeys were kind of funny. My kids kind of went off on their own and then they got surrounded by all these monkeys. And uh, yeah, at one point, yeah, this monkey started attacking or it looked like it was attacking, but he just kind of put his paws on my son's uh, shirt. Unfortunately, I don't have really good footage because I started yelling at the monkey, but uh, yeah, here they're trying to get away from the monkeys. <laughs> so they're slowly, slowly creeping around them. Um, but yeah, I think honestly, if you're with an adult or something, they're not gonna bother you. I, I think, uh, especially once you get in the park, there's a, there's a person who kind of makes sure the monkeys don't bother you and stuff. And I think the monkeys just keep to themselves generally. You're not allowed to feed them or anything. So they're not trained to go to humans or anything. They just kind of keep to themselves. And a really cool experience to be so close to wild monkeys. And we didn't get to see them bathing, unfortunately, because I think it's just hot now. Usually they, they bathe in the actual hot bath onsen, um, which is kind of the unique experience. But I think it was just as cool to be there now, just to be so up close and personal to them, see them like ro rolling around, playing with each other, fighting on top of each other. And just, uh, yeah, we had a good time watching the monkeys. It was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, here's, uh, here's two uh, siblings, I think, just on top of each other. <laughs> and then, yeah, there's a hot tub bathing area. The monkeys all were drinking from it. It had a strong sulfur smell, but I don't know. I guess they like drinking like hot, the hot tea, hot sulfur tea. Um, but yeah, it was, it was definitely a cute place. Cute to see monkeys. Yeah, this was a monkey weekend because even on the trip up, 
uh, we just passed so many monkeys. I think we passed like three or four different groups of monkeys just driving to this area. Uh, so we never, I've never seen wild monkeys in Japan. So that was kind of a unique experience for sure. And uh, yeah, uh, I don't know, just cool. I love seeing these monkeys. I think everyone loves monkeys. So uh, I think it's definitely worth the trip. It's only 800 yen for an adult, 400 yen for kids uh, over six. So three of our kids were free, um, which was nice. Um, yeah, so just a cool place to check out. Would definitely recommend it. And uh, yeah, I think from Tokyo, this park is about three hours, maybe four hours. Um, so it was a nice, nice stop. Uh, yeah, three hours from, yeah, because we drove like two and a half hours from the Airbnb and then three hours further once we got here to get home. Um, so yeah, it was a, it was a good, good rest stop. So combining the two, you know, the snow corridor and the the monkey snow monkey park i think is a good itinerary for a weekend it was very exciting we had a good time and if you can throw kanazawa in there i think that would be a, a perfect week extended weekend getaway so i would highly recommend that here's some footage of you know during the winter months when the the snow monkeys are actually in the hot bath um which yeah i guess would be cool to see maybe we'll be back um to see it in october uh, we stopped to get Nagano apples, giant apples. They tasted really good, super crispy too. The, Nagano is famous for the apples, so we saw an apple stand and did that. Then we went to a restaurant, a tomato onion. This was like an old style American diner type restaurant. It was good. We had a good time. And then we went home. So that was our trip. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Definitely leave us a comment if you liked it and uh, subscribe. Hope to see you in the next video. Thanks guys. Godspeed.